Recently, I was watching through a catalog of videos made by a channel called Brit Monkey. I thought nothing much of it until I saw this video called Enter the Pleasure Cube. To simplify, the video revolves around a comic where a character time travels to the future, only to learn that the human species is kept in tight, cramped boxes. Inside those boxes are unconscious hosts, whose told are experiencing nothing but pure bliss and happiness forever. So here's the strange thing. Now, in spite of the seemingly innocent nature the cube presents, giving you an infinite supply of fulfilled pleasure, most people watching this probably would treat it like a drug and hesitate to go in at all, and the rest of the video was explaining why people might feel that way. It was quite an amazing video, so I'll put a link to it in the description. And after watching the video, I thought to myself, hey, TikTok. That recent social media app which is now more popular than Google, as futuristic and distant of something like a pleasure cube is, it actually doesn't seem like we're that far from something like it. With the prime candidate being TikTok. Because whether I like to believe it or not, it isn't really that far from just being a pleasure cube. TikTok is a pleasure cube, and I don't think I need many reasons to explain why. TikTok is a running, personalized algorithm constantly exposing viewers to short-form content, 24-7. And the effects are damaging. It is designed to be addictive in order for you to keep your utmost attention and for you to keep scrolling. And scroll people do. Even though the app likes to remind you to stop scrolling, it's not uncommon to hear that most people using TikTok end up using it for hours at a time. Now, I'm not gonna sit here and lecture you for the next 10 minutes about how TikTok is bad for you and how you should avoid it. This video is, after all, about pleasure. Rather, for the next 10 minutes, I'm gonna tell you how terrible it is for you. One more thing I want to clarify before diving into this touchy subject. YouTube is in no way clear of all these issues. People such as myself spend time on YouTube for several hours a day and it does promote short attention spans. According to YouTube Studio, for most of my videos, only half of my content in a single video is ever watched. Rather, what I'm trying to say is that every single flaw that YouTube has, TikTok sees that and just ramps it up to a billion. And also, I'm gonna be talking about TikTok a lot in this. It is, after all, the entire subject of the video. But just also remember that YouTube Shorts is a part of this issue too. So when I mention TikTok, YouTube Shorts would also probably have the same response. Alright, with all that out of the way, I think we can continue now. So, uh, yeah. Let's begin. Before diving in what's truly wrong with TikTok, we first have to look at its general source of content. TikTok's main form of videos are short, thrilling, and engaging. Now, as surprising as this may sound, I do think that, in theory, short-form content definitely has potential. You know when you've had a problem with anything, so you've had to go on YouTube to find some kind of tutorial, and the only things you could find are just randomly long videos of some guy with an accent? That was really annoying. And since YouTube got rid of the dislike counter, without a plugin, you'll have no easy way to figure out if the videos you're watching are fake or not. TikTok can help with this. At its best, if you wanted some quick information about something or needed a fast tutorial, you could find one that could last under a minute. TikTok in sparse doses can be actually really useful. It can be used as a time killer if you're on a bus, a quick helper when you need a tutorial for something, etc. But, 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 I said four key words here, in theory and sparse doses. Because while TikTok could theoretically be useful, you and I both know that in practice, it is just awful. The content on TikTok is absolutely terrible. Most of the content isn't informative, instead just being randomly edited and colorful messes. And the people that use TikTok are obviously not going to be using it in short doses. Did you really think they were that healthy? No. Most people who use TikTok end up using it from up to either an hour to the entire day. And when your brain is just crammed to the utter brim with short, stimulating content, cracks tend to open in the system. You'll be getting content such as random Q&As, dance videos, random edits, shiny colors, and pipelines. Let's actually talk about that. Pipelines? The absolute worst form of content ever. Basically, all it is is just some kind of show, typically Family Guy or Loud House for some reason, 
packed with mobile gaming in the background and maybe subtitles. Now you might think that this content shouldn't even exist, but because TikTok encourages extremely short view durations and most people who use TikTok have some kind of ADHD, this actually, more often than not, gets people to watch TikTok videos all the way through. It's actually kind of frustrating just how much it works. TikTok's entertainment is also just pretty dystopian in general, with most of the comedy just being random colors and sound effects. And no, I'm not talking about the 21st century memes, those are fine. It's the kind of entertainment where it looks like this. See how much mommy and daddy love me, or see how much are in their bank account? I already know mommy and daddy love me, so let's see how much money they have. So yeah, we're absolutely screwed if this represents us later in the future. Oh, and don't even get me started on the challenges people do on TikTok. In the 2010s, some popular challenges in that decade included the Mannequin Challenge, Mentos and Diet Coke, the Ice Bucket Challenge, and even Fidget Spinners. I'm not saying that these were entertaining exactly, in fact some of them were quite unfunny, but compared to TikTok's challenges, it's actually kind of worrying, because more often than not, most viral trends on TikTok are literally crimes. Devious Licks, the Tide Pod Challenge, the Key of Death Challenge. I mean seriously, it's literally just stealing cars. That's the challenge. Who's following this? I think the worst part too is the reward. You know, the thing that everyone wants at the end of the day. If you somehow manage to get yourself in these dangerous challenges, then congratulations. You get a bunch of meaningless likes. That's it. I'll talk about this later in the video, but since TikTok is extremely fast in video traffic, most people who like these videos will just forget about what you just committed seconds later. So doing all that was all worthless in the end, other than perhaps getting on a news station. I know we like to make fun of the older generations for thinking that we're stupid, but hey, they have their points. TikTok promotes ADHD, shorter attention spans, and even theft and life-threatening trends to get a bunch of likes. And despite all these problems, people simply just don't care it seems like. In fact, it's actually normalized. If you don't have TikTok, then you're weird because you're not part of the pack, making even more people want to use TikTok because they want to feel like they fit in. All that, and there's much more to uncover here. I think one of the main problems TikTok faces as a content site is that TikTok doesn't promote innovation whatsoever. Now, like a lot of TikTok's problems, YouTube also has this. I mean, Christ, the amount of offensive meme compilations on the site with millions of views awes me to this day. But here's the thing, the YouTube meta is usually all about that money, and generally YouTube videos are far more likely to be unseen by the public. So in order to be successful, you have to put in forth the effort in order to create something truly original and unique, or at the very least, have a lot of time put into it. There are exceptions, yes, but that's not the norm. Now, on TikTok, who cares about any of that? You see, because of TikTok's faster video traffic, due to all those short-form videos, videos more often than not are way more blooded in views and hearts than on YouTube. So if there's a formula that people notice that gets them to that level of success, everyone will use it. And what's the formula? Copying what everyone else is doing. And again, YouTube has this problem as well, but here's the difference. Copycats will obviously be punished on YouTube and get less views than that of what inspired it. Not the case on TikTok. In order to get successful, you have to do what everyone else is doing action by action. And any creativity is strongly advised against. What's this? A quirky video of a high schooler dancing to a random song? Whoa, look at all those likes. I got to do that too. What's this? An edit of mobile gameplay with a show on top? I mean, hey, that guy's getting successful. Might as well give it a try. Whoa, a guy committing a crime for likes and it's working? Better do that too. And more often than not, TikTok rewards people who steal ideas. Creativity, innovation, and imagination is all thrown out of the window. Because the easiest way of getting successful on TikTok is pure theft. And you also have to remember just how purely forgettable some of this stuff is. Take dancing for instance. People, especially 15 year old girls, just love dancing in front of the camera. And they're also quote successful off of it. 
But what you don't see is how meaningless it all is in the end. What distinguishes this girl from this girl? Yeah, you guessed it. Nothing. Yes, the video did get successful per se, but only in the short term. All it serves is just another cog in the system for millions of creeps to get their dopamine hit for the next 10 seconds. Paradoxically, you aren't famous despite the likes and numbers. Because people will just forget about you the second they swipe to the next video and watch as someone does the exact same thing you did. Oh, and you know what? We might as well talk about being famous on TikTok now. Being able to get quote-unquote famous on TikTok, and just TikTok alone, is borderline untrue and is impossible. And here's what I mean by that. You see, numbers, views, comments, and likes are only part of the equation. But you also have to remember that being famous is all about character and being unforgettable. This right here is important. When your content is so utterly unique, that even in your text font, people will already know who you might be. Case in point. Just because you have a lot of views on something, maybe means you're famous, sure, but certainly not memorable. Past the numbers, it's truly all about the content. And this is one of TikTok's problems. Being memorable on TikTok is just not possible. Or at least if you're taking the route of stealing everyone's content to get successful. It just seems paradoxic for your platform to not have a consistent way of rising up the ranks. How are you supposed to get successful on your site if your content is either a minute long or purely forgettable garbage? On YouTube, there are so many yet vastly memorable icons on the platform. Markiplier, Mr. Beast, PewDiePie, me. Actually, maybe not yet. But you see, if you do the exact same content over and over again on YouTube, you're not going to get successful. Likewise, on TikTok, the difference is, is that it gives you the illusion of success. Now, let's go back to those millions of girls dancing to random music. What separates this girl from this girl? In the long term, absolutely nothing. Please, oh gullible viewer, don't be deceived. This girl is not famous. Yes, she has a lot of likes, a bunch of comments, and a crap ton of views. But this is only in the short term. And by short term, I mean 10 seconds at best. I'm so sorry if you're watching this random girl on this app, but you're just not memorable. The moment you're seen in the public eye, you're gone just like that. And by the time the viewer swipes up to the next video of someone dancing, they probably already have forgotten who you even were. No character, no personality, no memorability, no uniqueness. Just another goddamn cog in the machine, because that's the easiest way to get likes. Now, sure, there will be the odd one out when someone does make it big on TikTok, both short-term and long-term. But again, don't let that deceive you. It takes an incredible amount of effort to truly be known in TikTok, and it's just not worth it in my eyes. This isn't just related to dancing videos either. It's pretty much every branch of content that's so forgettable as a medium. And combined with the fast traffic on TikTok and the short attention span everyone has, it would be a miracle if the viewer could even remember one of the videos he or she watched. And like I said, YouTube has this issue too. Just because your dumbass meme compilation got 10 million views, does not mean you made it into the big leagues and you are a celebrity. Everyone's gonna forget that video the moment they click off of it. Oh, okay, wow. I really needed to get that off my chest. Um, yeah. Sorry if I offended anyone I pointed out. But, um, let's just get back on track. Television. Remember that? Remember how god-awful some of the features on cable TV were? And just how much better YouTube was when it launched? Yeah, you probably do. You see, there's a reason people don't use TV anymore. Unlike YouTube, you can't specifically search what you, the consumer, wants to watch. Instead, you were provided a select number of channels that cable would give for you. Nothing that you might have actually liked. Okay, yeah, you can search up the content you want to watch on TV, but it's just so out of the way, it might as well not be there. Most memories I have of TV were just switching channels mindlessly for several hours, consuming content, but at the same time watching nothing as I just skipped the others that didn't hook me in the first few seconds. Now tell me, does that not sound like TikTok?
In a way, we have quite literally gone backwards and are now consuming content the same way people did with television. Mindlessly scrolling random channels, waiting for that one video that will hook you for a few seconds, for hours on end. And we all know how bad TV is. Now, yes, you can also search up specifically what you want for TikTok, but like TV, it's not presented as a default feature and is far into the back of the app. Your default stance using TikTok and people who remember using the app won't be finding a particular video they found interesting, but to just scroll and wait for the interesting videos to come to you. But there is one thing that TikTok has that TV doesn't, and that's the algorithm. Remember how bored you felt when you were switching channels over and over again on TV? Never really finding a channel you'd really enjoy? Well now, thanks to TikTok's scarily advanced algorithm, the more you watch content on the app, the more it seems like TikTok knows what you want to watch. So instead of feeling bored 24-7, you can feel engaged 24-7. Just look at all these pretty colors. Look at those captions. Oh my god. Is that Family Guy mixed with mobile gameplay on the bottom with subtitles in the middle? Count me in. I'll be watching this for days. And because of the algorithm, I don't have to go out of my way and search for this content. It just comes to me. Now, obviously, the results of this can be harming. Some of the many side effects and a severe decrease in focus, attention span, and even clarity. And people who make content on TikTok know this. They know that if the viewer doesn't find a video engaging for the first second, then they'll just swipe up. So every day, TikTok videos get more competitive for the viewer, by getting more cracked out, more colorful, and more stimulating. It's a mentally damaging cycle, with each result ending in a lower and lower attention span, as more videos become more insane to get your attention for half a minute. It's TV all over again, but worse. And I'm not sure if I want to switch to the next channel anymore. And of course, I wouldn't be able to mention all the flaws on TikTok without mentioning the lucrative amount of Peterphilia. This is where YouTube is a step ahead of TikTok. For years, YouTube has tried their absolute best to limit the level of on their site, like turning off comments on kids' channels, banning links, and what have you. TikTok has attempted to try and stop this huge issue, but it's just not good enough. And combined with a majority of the users being mostly teenagers, and a huge chunk of videos on TikTok alone consisting of teenagers dancing, then, yeah, you have an app that is full to the brim with creeps. What truly amazes me is just how okay with everyone this is for some reason. Do these people use these creeps to their advantage to get huge views? Or are they just truly unknowing of all the files watching them? Why does no one talk about this enough? Now, for my own sake, and the fact that I don't want to get demonetized, I recommend watching this video made by Upper Echelon to know about this more thoroughly. But just know that TikTok has a massive creep problem, and it's not hard to find it. Now, I've used the argument of your brain is rotting as your attention span gets lower using TikTok quite a lot in this video. But I assure you, exposing yourself to short form content for hours does more to you than just affect your attention span. You become more depressed going back to reality. Anxiety increases, confusion increases. You're disappointed in the world as you no longer get any dopamine hits. I would know firsthand, having already watched enough TikTok and YouTube shorts in my time over the year. And studies even hint that crime increases whenever people use TikTok. Funnily enough, as I was getting footage on TikTok for this video, I unironically got myself into a scrolling loophole to procrastinate on editing this. When I finally stopped watching for a good hour or two, I looked around my room and, to put it bluntly, I kind of felt like crap. I no longer had motivation to work on this video for that day, as I just felt disinterested in everything around me. I felt lost. And on top of that, more evidence has also shown that people who consistently use TikTok tend to recall memories or remember moments less and far harder, as your mind encases in a misty fog consuming content. You become disillusioned. I think I'm also so passionate about this video because short form content kind of hits me hard on a personal level. As I applied a moment ago, there was a brief point in my life, or at least what felt like a brief moment, 
but what actually ended up being a year where I did nothing but watch either TikTok or YouTube Shorts. Ironically, I think I was far worse with myself than most people who use these platforms, as there would be times where I would watch these short, engaging videos for a majority of the day, from morning to night, and every time I was done watching on these platforms, I just felt sad. I didn't like it, and I told myself numerous times that I would stop scrolling, and yet there I was, in my bed, just laying down and watching this garbage popcorn content. Also during this phase, I found myself to recall less, focusing was harder, I became more indifferent to the world, time tended to just fly by, and I felt more depressed with myself. Thankfully I've stopped, but it just goes to show how much I'm scared for the people of the future. What will the people who use these apps be like in a decade? Sure, I suppose if you use this app for just half an hour, then the side effects are far less noticeable. But to the people that spend their days, their life on these apps, what are they gonna do? That's who I'm worried about. YouTube, as I've stated, isn't much better, but the consequences are far less damaging there compared with so this. I have to talk super fast and I have to use lots and lots of words. Talk, 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 talk. I can't stop talking, can't stop talking. <laughs> Yeah, girl. You crazy. At those muddy paws! You know what that means! I look back on what I did for a majority of 2021 and find that all I wanted to do back then was just go back and watch more. Because the truth was, is that this pretty much became at the time my last form of pure pleasure. It was the only thing that kept me truly engaged in life. Just like the dystopian form of the pleasure cube, TikTok is a hard drug built to keep you in and for you to desperately want to go back into. Despite the vague benefit of constant doses of dopamine, seemingly a happy chemical while using TikTok, it just feels wrong. When you are consistently exposed to short, colorful, quirky videos, that does stuff to your brain. And I do worry people my age don't really have much of an attention span. Actually, I don't even think saying TikTok is a pleasure cube is even a metaphor. The cube and exterior of it represents your house, and the content inside represents you, scrolling on TikTok for hours and hours. Overall, I do think this video is kind of pointless though. I unfortunately won't be changing the minds of the short attention span TikTok users, assuming they've even watched that far into the video. But I suppose this video can be used as more ammunition to an already ongoing trend of people hating TikTok. I mean hell, on top of all the downright pedophilia, TikTok is also Chinese controlled, which the US has shown to be very wary of. It's clearly a controversial app, both emotionally and legally. In fact, as of writing this video, there was already an attempt by the government to try and ban TikTok, though I'm not sure it's ever gonna work. Moving the spotlight now, YouTube is in no way perfect from this. I've already damaged my attention span as much as it is thanks to YouTube. But good god, I'm just amazed that it was even possible to go lower than that. So, a lesson to wrap things up? To the people that haven't used TikTok yet, and to the people that want to start out a new YouTube channel by posting YouTube shorts, don't. And yeah, that's about all I have to say. Thank you for listening, and goodbye. The judge noticed. Okay, guys, the big. It's the Mahajapit.